the hunt. You know the drill. Predator gets hungry. Predator hunts prey. Predator kills prey. Right? Wrong. Sometimes the prey fights back. Team members get confused. Major screw-ups abound. But the hunter who pays attention to all the disasters survives. Six predators with amazing weapons show us what it really takes to make the ultimate kill. A prehistoric monster waits for the morning sun. On this Indonesian island, he rules supreme. This 300-pound Komodo dragon is the heaviest lizard on Earth. He's a 10-footer, equipped with three-inch claws and a phenomenal sense of smell. As the temperature approaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the dragon heads for a water hole. This is where Rusa deer quench their thirst. The deer notice him watching them. They're not giving up their drink for such a slow predator. The dragon casually ambles closer. He waits. And then, just when they're lulled into a sense of security, he makes his move. It's a fail. Deer are fast. They're gone. What went wrong? The dragon played the part of innocent bystander and worked himself closer. His top speed is 12 miles per hour. Much slower than a deer. Normally, he'd ambush his prey from a yard away. They saw him triggering the deer's flight response. More importantly, he couldn't deploy its secret weapon. He changes up his strategy. Growing up here, it's a dragon-eat-dragon -dragon world. Komodos are cannibals. especially of the young and innocent. It's also young and agile. Out of reach, the adult waits patiently. Young dragons make up a tenth of an adult dragon's diet. The youngster senses that this is his only safe spot. He's right. Adult Komodos are clumsy climbers, and the light tree branches might break under his 300-pound weight. In this round, youth trumps a another fail. The hungry stomach of the Komodo grumbles for a new strategy. If you can't kill your own, then go for leftovers. The beach is a big plate of discarded food. His flickering tongue pinpoints nearby carcasses. He essentially 
tastes the air by picking up molecules and delivering them to the Jacobson's organ, kind of super nose, inside his mouth. Something smells good to him. Several movable jaw joints let him expand his mouth wide enough to vacuum the fish down whole, bones and all. Good thing, he hasn't eaten in days. He could gorge almost 80% of his body weight, the equivalent of 1,200 hamburgers in one sitting. But this meal is just scraps, yet every little scrap counts. But another dragon is already dining on the prize. Now to steal what little is left. A little intimidation, and our opportunist dives in head first. The smaller dragon stands by and watches the curious show. He's a jack of all trades and master of none. By afternoon, the dragon is ravenous and is. It's playing out as the dragon anticipated, even though he's nowhere near the buffalo. He has an invisible weapon, venom. His bites released a unique lizard venom into the buffalo's bloodstream. The venom's compounds are as potent as those of the world's deadliest snake and will soon send the buffalo into shock. With a bite force of almost 60 pounds per square inch, the dragon's 60 serrated teeth inflict a gaping wound and with the thrust of his muscular neck, deliver the toxic cocktail one inch deep into the buffalo's flesh. Now he follows and waits. With favorable winds, he can pinpoint his prey's exact location over six miles away. As the venom courses through the buffalo's body, it stops the buffalo's deep wound from healing. Its blood pressure drops, and it weakens. The buffalo's water hole adds a second invisible force, bacteria from the feces-filled water, which enter the wound and all but guarantee a noxious infection. Buffalo takes one last stand against the dragon. Shock sets in, and its body begins shutting down. It's dinner time. Whether the dragon likes it or not, the big buffalo will be eaten family stuff. It's been a long, drawn-out hunt, but his venom weapon worked perfectly. It was deployed with just one bite, so he avoided injury. Imagine a predator so strong it could outbite a lion, a tiger, and a bear. This beauty scours the African plains for her next meal. Hyenas are efficient scavengers, but can hunt if needed. Lately, she's had some bad luck.
her cubs need her protein-rich milk, and she can't produce it if she doesn't eat. She needs food, and she needs it now. She detects a faint whiff of carrion and heads in that direction. She can smell meat from over a mile away. Across the plains, lions have killed. They're feasting on a wildebeest, and she'd love a part of it. Other hyenas have the same idea. But there's no hospitality here. These lions weigh twice as much as her. Pushing in is risky. Lions kill hyenas regularly. Just last month, her mother tried to steal a meal from two lions. She knows the risks, but hunger trumps caution. These lions will defend their kill at all costs, but she still goes for it. She moves in. to escape. What went wrong? <laughs> she joined forces with two fellow hyenas to muscle in on the lion's kill. To get it right, the clan needed four hyenas to every lion. But without reinforcements, the three lions were just too strong, and the plan backfired. There's no point wasting any more energy here. When the stealing gets tough, the tough go hunting. Especially when all over the plains, deliciousness abounds. Male Toby are engaged in their once a year sparring competitions to secure a mate. And some are just plain exhausted. She watches them closely. Her strategy hit them when they're down. She sneaks up close, hoping to go unnoticed. It's a miserable attempt. She had no plan at all and just tried to creep in and secure a hold on the topi as it lay dozing. Her approach gave her away, and the big antelope was just too strong and quick. Topi are one of the fastest mammals on Earth and can run at 50 miles an hour. That's 10 miles an hour faster than a Back to the drawing board. The topi need to settle before they can try again. She heads further across the plain, where her intent is not yet suspect. Her plan is to get a grip with her jaws. Hyenas have the strongest bite in the mammal kingdom and exert up to a thousand pounds of pressure. 
If she can get a hold of any part of the token, her huge jaw and powerful neck muscles, normally designed to lift heavy prey, will enable her to hang on. Bingo. Another target. She stalks in closer. She loses her prey. It's a fail, but that's not all. This topi bites back. Double fail. What went wrong? The topi started running before she could bite down. Still, she got a grip, but he just steamrolled her. Topi weighed 300 pounds, and they're tall. She weighs 150 pounds. Her only real weapon is her strong mouth. The force of the prey's weight outperformed the force of the predator's jaw. Then, the hunted turned the tables on the hunter and attacked. The Topi's 15-inch horns could have caused serious damage. If she'd been hurt, her hunting would be over. To bring down one of these Topi, she's going to need support. There's no shortage of help in a hyena clan. It's run by the dominant females and is like an all-girl gang. Males are smaller, and the females control access to food, mating, and the pecking order. She gathers a hunting party and heads back. Now she has some fire. Even Grandma is in the mix. The Topis spot the group immediately. A hunting party is much more obvious than a sneaky single. Soon enough, they go back to grazing. And dozing. Two lead hyenas approach cautiously, quietly. The sleepy Topi is oblivious. Three hundred pounds of hungry hyena weight tired the Topi out quickly. <laughs> Hunting is way more expensive than scavenging, but this time they got a high return on their investment. More often than not, they just steal from other successful killers. Even if that hunter is an infamous 60-pound dog. African wild dogs are just that, true dogs. While hyenas are actually more closely related to cats. When the two cross paths, they fight like cats and dogs. <laughs> Hyenas are three times a dog's weight, but the dogs are faster. The smaller dogs band together to target the hyena's soft hindquarters and use their numbers against her. Her only defense is to hole up. They must be wary of the hyena's jaws. The hyena stays put until the dogs lose interest. The dog pack is run by the alpha male and female. Their pups 
are just six weeks old. The pack must hunt daily if they're to feed this high-energy brood. Mom and Dad rally the troops. The alpha male relies on his sharp hearing to locate prey. Today, he hears Impala. Some stalk in. Others fan out to attack the herd from all angles. The dog strategy is to work together as beaters to flush the prey out into the open, where the other pack members can attack. Their tactic is to zigzag their way through the bush, but the dog pack can circle the herd. As the Impala cut across the curve, the dogs narrow the gap. Wild dogs have the stamina to maintain a speed of 35 miles per hour for three miles. So it's a long chase. They have their target. As they close in, the terrain suddenly changes. The plan goes dead in the water. The dogs are scared of crocodiles, so the deep river stops them short. It's a fail. Their plan seemed solid. They split up, isolated one Impala from the herd. The prey had its own strategy. It deliberately ran into the water. This was a smart counter. With only a 33% chance of being taken by a crocodile versus over 80% chance of being caught by the dogs, he chose right. The pack regroups and heads back to the den during the heat of the day. They'll wait until dusk before hunting again. Wild dogs expend loads of energy on a single chase, so this pack needs a payoff soon. High-pitched twittering conveys their excitement and rallies the pack. It's time to hunt again. The alpha male takes the lead. Impala again. The dogs split up to take their flanking positions around the prey. As Africa's marathon runners, the dogs are equipped with large hearts and lungs to assist with speed and endurance, while their large ears act as heat radiators to help keep them cool. The dogs hunt in relay, taking turns to run down the Impala until it's exhausted. But the Impala makes for the same river. Impala tires are water. Dogs know it. This time, the dogs cross downstream. Success. Uh -huh. 
The Impala was exhausted from the chase, and the swim used every bit of energy it had left. The dogs got clever, using a shallow crossing in the river. Dogs don't like water, unless there's meat within their grasp. Like the hyena, they disembowel their prey. But here, there's no hierarchy. Every dog has a spot at the table. They'll consume the Impala in less than 10 minutes. But they aren't the most ruthless predators out there. The bald eagle fell in the sky for possession of the prey. He snatches it back. What happens next is truly extraordinary. Our hunter desperately clutches his prey. The battle is over, and his catch is gone. But he doesn't lose his cool. He may not be an expert fighter, but he's a good hunter. He catches another coup by surprise. But he dives too far down. His feathers are waterlogged. Now, he could drown. All he has to do is let go of the coot. But he's not giving up his meal. Typically, fish don't fly and birds don't swim. But he'll have to break the rules. He tries out a kind of butterfly stroke. The injured coot has no hope of escape. Safely away from thieving eagles, the predator claims his hard-earned meal. The eagle turned the failure of his first hunt into opportunity. While the others were still fighting over his prey, he nailed another coot on the QT. It went downhill when his feathers got wet. The eagle weighs 14 pounds, and a little water, along with a two-pound coot, meant he had to get to land quick to risk hypothermia and drowning. He innovated and started paddling, prey in tow. The talons possess 10 times the grasping strength of a human hand. He turned three fails into immediate success. A real triumph. hunt was a risk, but it's nothing compared to another eagle that goes for a bird twice as large as the coot. She finds it on East Africa's vast soda lakes. Here, flamingos gather in the thousands to feed on the microscopic blue-green algae and crustaceans found near the water surface. Their bills are like a filtered vacuum, sucking in the most nutritious food. Like the bald eagle, this African fish eagle is going in for some bird-on-bird -bird action. The flamingo weighs nine pounds. That's two-thirds the eagle's own weight. And it's five inches taller than the hunter. How to even begin? First, she must single one out. Luckily, her eyesight is one of the sharpest in the animal kingdom. Eyes on the sides of her face allow for an extreme 340 degree field of view, nearly all the way around her head, while her visual accuracy comes from the one million sensory cells in her eyes that enable her to see five times farther than humans and allow her to locate her prey from over 650 feet away. She can see five basic colors.
compared to our three, giving her a super ability to pick out highly camouflaged prey. The birds on the outer edge suspect a threat. Panic spreads quickly throughout the Titan flock. Eagle scans for any sign of weakness and identifies one flamingo isolated from the rest. A full on attack isn't going to happen, but every time the flamingo is thwarted. The flamingo is losing energy fast. Now, the eagle gears up for her final. Mastery move. The eagle's hunt is going according to plan. She's isolated the flamingo and is wearing it down. Now, to collect her reward. But it's too heavy. If you can't go up, try going down. She pushes the flamingo underwater, hoping to subdue it. Now, to get it to shore. But suddenly, she aborts the operation. It's a fail. What happened? Flamingos spend 80% of the day feeding to keep their energy levels up. The eagle strategy was to isolate a straggler tire it out with dive bombs until it used up all its energy and was too weak to escape. But the nine pound flamingo weighed too much for her to carry, so she dunked it and then tried to get it to shore like the bald eagle did with the coop. But a minute into it, she realized she didn't have the strength. Sometimes you have to know when to quit. What's the point of calories gained from this meal if it costs even more calories to get it? Hunting costs energy, especially when you're still learning how to do it right. This young leopard searches for supper. He's been with his mother for nearly two years, but now he's on his own. At this point, he'll eat anything, even porcupine. His prey doesn't need to run. They have a built-in fortress. But he's too inexperienced to know that. 30,000 12-inch quills stand between him and a meal. And this is double trouble. He knows they're vulnerable from beneath, but he can't figure out how to get there. He has the right idea, but his execution is far from perfect. The quills can lead to septic wounds that can be fatal. The leopard tests the limits, unsure of how to proceed. Backward charge says back off. One zero to the porcupine. This was a tough lesson. He knew what he had to do. Flip one porcupine over to inflict a lethal bite. But he was just too inexperienced in his attack. And the porcupine stuck together, making it harder for him. In the end, he was lucky to escape with a sore paw. He could have paid with a long and painful death. Unable to run with his hurt paw, he tries a completely different strategy. He can't sprint, but he can jump. The plains are full of impala. A leopard's coat is perfect for treetop camouflage. 
He waits for the unsuspecting Impala to come within striking distance. His attack must be perfectly timed. chase. Leopards can normally reach 35 miles an hour, but he has a quill in his paw. Double fail. This plan was solid. A silent attack from directly above. Leopards are strong and agile enough to pull this off. To break his 30-foot fall, he spreads his body to increase drag, while his muscular limbs act as shock absorbers. His range finding was dead on. But there was one critical problem. His jump was just too high. And while he was in the air, the Impala had time to get out of the way. His strategy has promise. So he tries again. He finds a lower tree. Stalks in unnoticed. The Impala come to feed on the flowers and fruit of this jackalberry tree. The perfect spot for an ambush. Unlike wild dogs and hyenas, he kills by strangulation. His secret to success was a lower jump, and he spread his body to cover a larger area. A leopard uses all four sets of claws to immobilize prey. The impala wasn't going anywhere. This success was forged 